Um, yeah. Uh, overall, I thought this episode was good. I guess. Um, Alan Hunter, who do you have any theories on Savitar yet? Um, uh, I don't think it's going to be anyone we've seen. Me, I guess. Like, yeah, I have a feeling I'm going to be so be upset if it's like someone that. brand new because, like, we they've been so obtuse with. Like like every Savitar appearance is like is like guess what mm! and then he runs away. Yeah, <laughs> like like even if it's HR, I would be disappointed by that because that would make no sense. That would be the stupid. That would be the silliest. Oh my thing. god, I I have the perfect perfect scenario. Okay, okay, all right. So whatever he says is gonna be really it, stupid. It I'm, is. I'm, I'm ready for it, and I can't wait. So, uh, Barry defeats Savitar. <laughs> And it's just like this long shot where the, he's like about to mask him. He takes the mask off, and it's snart. <laughs> oh fuck! <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> and then Barry will say, "Didn't you die?" <laughs> That's a Mr. Robot season two shit right that there. Is so stupid! I I'll be disappointed if it doesn't happen. <laughs> it was me, Barry. Yeah, you just pulled right. the mask off. He's like, 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 wow, well, it's finally time on the truth, Barry. My da, 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 da. God damn it! <laughs> that snart music just blares. I can't wait for it. Yeah, I'm in this uh, thing, Henry. God damn it! <laughs> for some reason, I'm the doctor is playing in my head. <laughs> Like, I'm full blast. Uh, Alan, awesome. you have any theories? Uh, it's, it's, a stu- it's, a, it's, less st- stupid than, uh, Hunter's. Well, I think Hunter sent the bar. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, that, that's gonna be on Hunter's grave when he dies. It was Snart. Snart was Avatar. Oh, uh, Wally. What? Uh, I, I too. I'm willing to buy it, I guess. So you I think don't know. Steve Rogers? Like it could be anyone, really. It could truly be anyone. I, like, I, uh, uh, I kind of agree that it could be. Ju- I don't know about Eddie. I thought Eddie too, but eh. well, there was a it theory was, last year. Because Eddie would be someone whose life was utterly destroyed by Barry, and if there was any, if there was some weird timey wimey way he got stuck in, if the, the where it falls apart is like, why would Eddie be stuck in the Speed Force? How the fuck did that happen? Right. I mean, um, if our theories about legends, yeah, if our theories about legends come true, and uh, Eobard somehow reinstates himself into the timeline, it could be Eddie, because that could be a symptom of him reinserting himself. So maybe, um, and since Legends is going to end first, it makes it more natural. But even then, I'm like, I don't buy it. I don't really, I really don't buy it. Um, I, this point, like, I'm having trouble buying anyone who's under that damn mask. Even yeah. Julian, because I feel like Julian would be the biggest cop out because like, oh, he's a jerk, but he's a villain, but now he's good. And then that's like, that is the formula that this show has followed for two seasons. Don't do it. Yeah. Again. Don't like, do the plot. Huh? What's the rival? That would be I hilarious. Mean, yeah, that would that would be stupid. That'd yeah, be than snart. <laughs> you just be like remember me. Snart yeah, would, dude, he, he would, they would pull that mask off. And he'd go, "Remember me, Barry," and literally everyone would go, "Who the fuck is that?" Why? Is that the guy from the first episode of the season? <laughs> is that the guy from last year? Like, who's uh, who the fuck is that? Quick timeout, guy, guys. Keep saying his name. Yeah. Uh, are we gonna talk about what just happened? What just the revelation? The revelation in the chat. Wow. No, we'll we'll save that for another thing. Maybe we'll do an a interview episode with Ed. Um, okay. okay, never mind. Back to back to the show. Um, da-da, no, da-da, I'm, da-da. Uh, I have another theory. Savitar is a uh, that uh, is uh, the villain Shade. Oh man! Why? Oh god! <laughs> <laughs> because they were setting something up in that episode. No, I'm kidding, guys. Um, no, like there isn't a single answer that's satisfying to me. Um, Iris isn't a satisfying answer. Joe isn't a satisfying that'd be, answer. That'd be fucking weird. Caitlin? Okay, that's here's fun. the thing. I say Caitlin, but Caitlin would be the best answer because she's just so nice. Um, 
you wouldn't believe that she would ever turn villain? I, I do. Yeah, they've been teasing that pretty hard. Yeah, but it never really works. No. I it's... still don't believe it. Oh, no. Uh, Daniel Pennebaker is a giant sweetheart. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's hard to take it seriously. Cody, yeah. hey, ben, 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 Pennebaker. Or is this <laughs> God damn it. I would love that. Um, no, it's her mother from that one episode that was really bad. Um, oh, God. <laughs> it's on part. Yeah. Oh, God. That would be great. I mean, I, I, I'm thinking... No, the actress is on the park from Enterprise. Against all odds, I think it's going to be Julian, which, again, is... Yeah, because they've set him up. And also, like, with the whole timey-wimey thing, he says that I was there at my own creation, um, which is just like... I mean, the worst answer would be Savitar is no one. Savitar is just Savitar. Which is just, like, the dumbest <laughs> thing ever. Uh, like, seriously, the biggest mislead I've ever heard. Um, but it sounds like something that they would do because they're just out of ideas at this point. Wait, Which could be... Open, it's, just, it's just nothing. Right. Well, he just rips his head off and then his head grows back. <laughs> what are you talking about, Barry? There is no one underneath the suit. Um, I was a force I... ghost this entire time. God damn it. I am really Keshad K- K- Aishan. No, it's actually Hayden Christensen. <laughs> God damn it. Um, um, Keshad Aishan is a protean from Mass Effect 1. Um, okay. I, I'll pretend I know what that is. Um, yeah, I played a shit in Mass Effect 1. I don't remember that ending, ending at all. But that, um, anything else about this episode, though? Um, uh, what is everyone feeling about... Barry and Iris at this point, because we brought up CW romantic <sighs> stuff earlier. I mean, I don't really care, because I've never really cared about any of these romances. At least not in the forefront. But that's my general approach towards all romance on TV. It should be a side plot, not the main plot. So I I'm think it has of... become a it has become a bit overbearing. Yeah. Like, so I'm what, fine with them, I guess, they, breaking up. They, they kind of, like, in season one, in bits of it, Iris was fucking insufferable. Yeah. And she got really good in season two, and I feel like they have now gone full circle full circle back to Iris being insufferable, compounded mm-hmm. with Barry continuing to make silly mistakes. Also, did she quit the, her job at the paper? Yeah, what did she do yeah. during the day? <laughs> that, that's a really good question. Wait for Barry? <laughs> she just waits on the bed for Barry, like... Where is he? he? She's just like a dog who's just like, yeah, and just uh, he'll be home any minute. Arlen, you just compared a, oh, an African American woman to a dog. Oh, okay. that one? That's getting that one. That's getting it out. I, I I'm actually more worried about feminists getting angry at that than African Americans, but still. Alan, um, also, you're you're the last person in the show to talk about being accidentally racist. Right, exactly. Just happened <laughs> once. Just one time. Happened like, happened like three times. Thankfully, it doesn't really exist in show format. Um, it's okay. But no, like it's it's no. It's, it's, it's Arlen could have kept that in. Um, yeah, I could have. Uh, that, but that was back when I actually edited the show and did uh did effort. <laughs> um, before it became crushing and undoable. Um. Yeah, I don't know, the the Iris stuff is just not interesting. Like, the only interesting romance in any of these sub- CW shows ever was the Thea and Roy stuff and the uh, Hannah Baker and Robbie stuff. And every other romance has always irritated me. because well, it's like it, Ronnie, and, it's Ronnie, and Caitlin, Robbie and Daniel Pennebaker had uh, chemistry, so that worked. Um, yeah. That and, and like, throughout season one, like, they get separated so many times, and they're both likable, and you're just like, I just want to see them just fucking settle down together, and then, of course, he dies, so. Right. Um, and again, it's always, like, is, on the side. Which is something else that I think is is leading me to believe that if Julian isn't Savitar, he's going to die, because he kissed Caitlyn, and she's right. a Black Widow. Yeah. Every- I wouldn't be surprised if we don't find out who Savitar is until he is born or whatever. Because he says that we're going to see him be born. Which, I don't... I don't understand it. Like, I really don't. But, we'll see. 
I know it sounds like we just pissed over this episode, but this episode was good. The problem is yeah. the season overall. Yeah, the season overall is not the best. I think mm. even though Supergirl has been madly inconsistent, if I had to give you my rankings for the shows overall, uh, um, I would go Legends, Arrow, Supergirl, Flash right now. Because the good episodes of Supergirl this uh, season, to me, they were really, really good. Um, and there has not been as much consistency of good episodes in Flash this season. No, you can count on one of... hand how many standout episodes there have been in this whole season. Yeah. And mm-hmm. last year, like, the fucking King Shark episode was fantastic. And there's yeah. only the four... And there was only... And well, King Shark appeared on the fourth episode. <clears throat> Right. Talk about tr- not even like having so and, much up up your sleeve that you can just drop some drop a tidbit like that. No, right. and I th- I honestly think that they it seems like because I'm not in the, I'm obviously not in the room. This show was being written. Um, they I shot think their they, wad? they they no they shot themselves in the foot with like well we'll send Savitar away for a while. Okay, mm-hmm. then what do you do? Yeah. You're just going to be waiting, like, treading water. And for while he was back. gone the entire time, there was no new discoveries made in him. There was no progress with his presence or character. Nothing. He was just gone. And then mm-hmm. reappeared at the tail end of an episode, and everyone's like, oh, we're doing this again. Yeah. And, like, I can't help but think the winner of this season is the winner because it has a shorter season. It's going to end stronger. It's going to end with, if you go by percentage... Overall, a higher percentage of good episodes to bad episodes. Um, and it's just going to be the winner. I'll, I mean, if you even like take the Invasion episodes as their own metric for measuring which are the better episodes, their Invasion episode is, like, the best. Like, if I had to go yeah, back to that ending. I think, I think through scheduling and just how the week plays out, like, the lucked out with getting the climax. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's just... It's... It's really weird, though, that Flash, which for two for two whole seasons, was the leader. Like, Arrow was leader for two seasons. Flash was leader for two seasons. This might be the beginning of the, the Legends era of leading these shows um, in terms of quality, um, which I'm completely okay with, because I think the team show kind of should be the one that sets the bar. Um that's just my opinion. Also, but... that show deserves it after last year because I think season season one of Legends Tomorrow and season three of Flash are very comparable in their overall quality. Because yeah, Legend season one is fucking all over the place, and then has a dreadful mid season run where there's just nothing happening for yep. anybody. Yeah, and it's it's really good to see them learn, and I hope I don't think we'll get it next year. Um, I think we'll have to deal with 22 episode seasons for at least another year. But maybe they switch to 15 episodes. Maybe they switch to 12, 13. Um, which I'd be okay with because then that means you can actually do more shows. So instead of having yeah. four 22 episode shows, you can do eight 13 episode shows and do more crossover episodes. That way you're still getting your Flash characters. You yes. have a, you ha- you know, you'd have a Flash season in the fall and then they show up in a spring crossover. And then vice versa. You have your spring characters show up in a fall crossover. That's what I would do, at least. Yeah, they also do this with iZombie. They're doing it with Riverdale. Short right. seasons, you mean? Yeah. And I see I see why. Like, it's actually much better when with the way they're doing things with those well, two look shows. At Game of Thrones has gotten their shows down to, like, eight episodes. No yeah, time. But one of those episodes seasons. will give you like like fifteen drop kicks to the face in a row, because that's how the show is written. Like the show is written on impact and right. uh, you know, kind of like delivering the goods. There's no like there, there is fluff, but it's not like this. It's not six episodes of fluff. Yeah, and like I I can't remember which season of Fargo it is, but one of them is shorter, and it's a perfect season of Fargo, like perfect. And Legion is going to end very soon. And it's going to end at, I think, 8 episodes or 10 episodes. And it's it's streamlined. Nothing feels filler. Nothing feels like it shouldn't be there. It just It's a cohesive whole, and everything works together. And, and Daredevil Season 2 is... Daredevil Season 2 is pretty long, isn't it? Daredevil Season 2 is like 20 episodes? 
No, it's 13 episodes. 13. They're all, is it all really? The, wow. All the Netflix yeah, stuff 13. is 13 episodes. It felt longer than that. Yeah. But, um, but Darede- even if it was, like, say, 20 episodes, Daredevil Season 2 would not be this much mature because Daredevil Season 2 is broken up into, like, chapters. We have, like, yeah. the Punisher sequence, which is, like, the first, like, I don't know, four or five four, episodes. Yeah, it's like, four episodes. Where it's, like, it's, a, like, it's, a almost, it's like a mini season. Thing. Yeah, it's like a very contained yeah. thing. And then it kind of blows up to the hand, and then it yeah. kind of brings those two things together. Also, yeah. with the next little... little, little Pinch of Kingpin. Yeah. Yeah. There's like a little mini Kingpin thing. And here's the thing. Even that season, I think it could have been 10. But it's it's still better than the first season, which if you try and go back and watch the first season of Daredevil, it's a mess. I have not well, since season two come out, came out. It's weird because by episode seven, they've blown all their money. So it's like three <laughs> episodes of legal drama. <laughs> like the only good episode is... Kingpin's origin, um, because it's Kingpin's origin, and yeah, that's amazing. Um, but it's just like legal drama until the fun out into the until the finale, and then most of the finale is still legal drama. But you get that ending fight scene, and you get Kingpin giving that speech in the car. Um, but even then, like that episode overall is like bottom heavy um, or back heavy, I guess. So. It's it's a very uneven show, and where it could we, have um, ended in eight episodes. Where do we all see Flash season three ending? Because, like, I, season two was you know I don't think anybody anticipated Barry doing the Flashpoint thing. Um, but I feel like this season hasn't set up enough to warrant um some kind of big cliffhanger. I think if you want my guess, I think Flash ends with Barry quitting being the Flash. Um, uh, I think he realizes he's made too many mistakes and he just tries going about his life being a normal guy. And he goes back in time one more time and creates Flashpoint here. Oh, I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. I think he just... If he goes th- back in time again at the end of the season, I will fucking scream. You know, I think he just tries being normal. Just They, uh, Berlanti, or I think Kreisberg, one of the two, said that we're boast. We're kind of. They were basically boasting about how it's not the kind of thing you do with a second year into your TV show or a second. Oh, what season. Flashpoint? Yeah. What, or no, the uh, what the uh, ending to season two. Usually, yeah. yeah Kevin, the, Smith, Kevin Smith said the same thing. He said that's something you do in season five. And I and, right. and he's right. He was right about it because they kind of waste. They kind of. It would have been better if they had they developed the characters more. I feel like Flashpoint would have worked after th- three or four seasons of development. Yeah, um, and there or, could have been more weight behind it. Here's the thing. So I remember back before season three premiered, I thought that they were going to do like I thought they were going to spend half a season in this Flashpoint universe. I thought they were going to spend a whole season. I I didn't think that they would go that far, but I thought it'd be half a season of this alternate universe where things were a little bit wonky and a little bit weird. And I can't help but think that that might have been the better idea. Because um, I think to other shows that are similar in genre to this, uh, Fringe. I don't know if any of you have seen Fringe. I, I've watched I've, a bit of Fringe. I I've started Fringe. it recently, and I'm, I'm trying to finish it, but it's been a while. Okay, well, this is kind of a spoiler, but season three... The entire show changes. Yeah. Um, because they basically tell the story from the perspective of... The Observers. No, that's season five. Oh, uh, it, yeah. It's, no, this is where... So there's revealed to be an alternate universe, and there's sort of what I'm going to call Nega Olivia. Um, so evil Olivia, basically. Oh, yeah, I remember that. And the entire season is from her perspective. Um and you see what is going on with her. So the and so she's on. Or yeah, you follow her pretending to be good Olivia, and then on her Earth you see good Olivia trying to Escape. get out of that Earth. Um, it had, and it's completely had a different. Good episode with the guy, one of the uh, guys from The Wire. Yeah, and it completely changed the show. It's not the same show at all because it's like a spy thing. It's like an undercover thing, and it completely changes the the way that the show works. If they had stuck with Flashpoint, 
uh, for half a season, the entire dynamic is different. Barry isn't trying to be the hero. He's just trying to figure out his place in this new world, and he's trying to figure out if he made the right choice, and he has to deal with that for an entire season. And we wouldn't be having the problem that we're having now because this whole Savitar plot would be squished to 12 episodes. Mm -hmm. And guess what? We would have gotten Savitar's reveal four episodes ago, and we would be we just be on the races or to the races to the finale of the season, and I can't help but think that, that would be a better season. I'm trying. I'm gonna go look because we okay in season one we knew that the Reverse Flash was Harrison Wells in episode nine by, by no, episode eight. nine. But yeah, eight, yeah, nine by the Christmas episode. Um, um, season two, I'm gonna look up right now. I think it was um, I, I, between either thirteen or fourteen. Um, season two ends with uh, mid-season. Barry gets his back broken. Um, so basically, it's he's gone about the whole season not knowing what he's dealing with, and also Harry has been secretly a bad guy. Speed. Yeah, um, and he turns against Zoom. So that's sort of been them not trusting him, and them tr- still trying to figure him out. Um, and it's kind of like a uh, them sort of commenting on last season how that Har- Harrison Wells is a bad guy, this Harrison Wells is a bad guy, but he turns good. Um, and then the second half is them all working together. Okay, so we figure out who Zoom is by episode 15 yep. of last season. <laughs> so in both seasons, we already had our villain reveal, and we had, you know time at the end of the season to kind of digest it and then let it kind of develop some more. Yeah. We're almost done with the season and we st- we're still, I feel like we know just as much about Savitar now as we did when he first appeared. Yeah. And here's the thing, like, if this was, even if this was a 12 episode show and we didn't know who he was until the last episode, that'd be fine because then we would know the entire show was about the mystery. Um, kind of like, uh, season before last of Doctor Who uh, where we didn't find out who Missy was until the very last episode. Um, spoilers. Uh, uh, but yeah, it's... But this is like this is dragging it out for a 22 episode show. We should know this by now. 23 episode show. Yeah, 23 episodes. I don't... <sighs> Which when you feels take like a se- waste. When you take a mid-season break and then you take a week off here and a week off there, it is an absolute drag. Yeah, and it it's like, <sighs> I'd rather you cut five episodes, take all that money in effects and time to make some of the other episodes look better, cut some, cut the fucking Shade episode and the <laughs> Dinosaur episode, or the what uh, the fuck does. ever. Uh, no, just, uh, no, get rid of the episode that had a fake kaiju. Okay, uh, it was a real kaiju. I would be okay with it, but it was a fake kaiju. This is how long this season has felt. I forgot about those episodes entirely. The shade yeah. thing, I remember mostly because, like, I remember that 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 villain being like the most one-off villain of the week the show has had so far. Um, yeah, and I completely forgot that the monster episode happened. Totally yeah. forgot. I'm still pissed about it because <laughs> <laughs> I like kaiju and I want more. Um, I wanted the flash of. Punch a kaiju in the face, god damn it. Um, I have expectations. Uh, uh, yeah, it, it just... This whole season has been like a slog. Especially compared to the other shows that are on. Like, Arrow has moved very quickly. Um, for those of us who have actually watched it. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like we're kind of spinning and our the, wheels, but... We are, but, you know, there's a point to it. I mean, the, the premiere of Flash, season three, was so damn good. And then it just tailspin. <laughs> Until, yeah. you know, here we are. Yeah. And and it's like, I think I said this before, <laughs> it's like Reverse Flash took all the energy from that first, those first two episodes uh, with him to uh, Legends. Uh, and it's just been like entropy just crashing in this show. Um, and it's really weird how uh, it's just so gone to hell. Guys, I put a uh, li- a picture in the in the uh, 
chat. Mm. On this chat. So check it out. Okay. Because it might give you a hint as to who Savitar could be. Based well, on the uh, I don't know about that. Yeah. For those that can't see what we're looking at, the comic design of Savitar is way different from the show, and he's got very little in terms of clothes, but uh, he does wear a helmet that looks kind of like Wally's. <sighs> I think that's, yeah, that's, I don't me, think that's just Easter design to me. I don't think it's Wally either. What if, um, it's, yeah. Garrick. What if it's who? What if it's Garrick? See, okay, someone brought that up recently, and that has made the most sense so far, because... Savitar has said, like, you know, he's kind of implied that, like, you know, Barry did this to him and that where he's been it drove him insane and blah, blah, blah. And they say that right. Wally was going to basically be in prison in the Speed Force and go insane. Currently, Jake Garrick is in prison in the Speed Force and could go insane. Right, but what that breaks down is he says, I will be worse than the Reverse Flash. He thought Zoom would be the worst. He thought Reverse Flash would be the worst. Now I'm the worst, which suggests... That at some point he's going to be really troublesome in this season, and Reverse Flash or not Garrick has been nothing but a champ, nothing but just a good guy as far as we know. So that's where that yeah, really it would be. So it would be extremely out of character and also utterly disappointing to see another father figure uh, get reduced to a villain role. Um, and also, like I would like John Wesley Ship to stick around, and I feel like that would just get rid of him. Also, yeah. we don't want Mark Wade freaking out again like he did last year. Wait, what? Maybe, maybe shake him a little bit. Remember when Mark Wade went on Twitter after Zoom was revealed? I do. Oh, he, mm, I don't remember he that. Went, he went apeshit because of how mm-hmm. how they uh, they how they they weren't they didn't. This was before they revealed who Jake Garrick, Jake Garrick really was. Mm. Oh, so this is before the actual Zalman reveal. This is this was this was uh, when Zoom is dropping Jay's body and says, "Well, this is problematic." Yeah, yeah. He said, "How, how can you take things? How can you take a character, or it's right?" He basically. Oh, you mean how, you, how do you take a character like the, ver- the very first Flash, Jay Garrick, and kind of just you know run over him with this villain role? Yeah, right. he basically That's... said he basically told him a new asshole. Yeah, yeah. It, it yeah it would be the same thing now, and Mark Wade would get on Twitter again and get angry about it. Um, good though. <sighs> like I would love I it if Mark Wade wrote some episodes because maybe. I, I'm. I don't know. Like I was bored of this topic weeks ago, and I'm bored of it now. I, yeah, like and it, it just and to the show's you know discredit, it it just continued. Like as much as as improved the last two episodes have been, we're still like okay, well, give us a reason to care. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. we need a reason to care more. Just because the episodes got better and you finally realized there was a plot, like doesn't mean that we're suddenly interested in, in Savitar because we still don't know shit about him. Yeah. But now we are now, like we're finally just talking in circles at this point because we're yeah having a was, lot of conversation about about us having no answers. Yeah, I would say let's talk about some news because there was a lot of stuff, but I think we're good. Um, um yeah. I'll just touch on something real quick that I mentioned earlier that's not going to spin into a conversation. I swear, everybody, <laughs> follow that lead. You say um, that, Sony, go fuck yourself with this venom oh, nonsense. Yeah. And this this silly ass announcement. No one believes you. Nobody has any goodwill left in you. Fuck off. Yeah. I'll, okay. I'll try to keep this brief too. I'll touch on that. I don't believe for a second that they're actually going to do that Venom movie. I think Absolutely that Venom not. movie. This is vapor. This is more nonsense. This is yeah. them getting their bi- their britches big because um, Spider Man is going to be popular again. They still kind of co own that, and they're going to be like, "Well, we can do that and have our own cinematic universe." And I swear to God. If this movie happens, I will I will put money in the fact that it will take place in the Amazing Spider-Man universe because they want their cake and they want to eat it too. Yeah, I, I don't. Uh, I don't think it's gonna happen. Like I think it's, it's not I think it's happen. a it's a corporate bluff. That's it's, what it's I would call go it. It's gonna go the way of the gambit, and they'll have a release date, and that release date will come and go, and then people will go, "What happened to that Venom movie you were talking about?" And yeah. we've had this conversation the last. Eight, when did Spider-Man three come out? 
2007. Okay, yeah. we've had this conversation, I don't know, for 10 fucking years. Yeah, It's never going to happen. It's a bluff. It's ba- it's nebulous. It's nothing. Yeah, I don't care if it has a release it, date. The Flash had a release it's date. A, it's a negotiation ship. It's like uh, the uh, Ronald Reagan Star Wars program. It doesn't actually mean anything. It's never actually going to work. But it is something that Sony can use in negotiations with Marvel. But I don't think it'll ever actually get into production. I'm mad that ever. we're even talking about it again because now it's like everybody kind of freaked out because it had a release date. And I'm like, I, I'm, I feel like I'm one of the only people who's like, so what? Like, yeah. <laughs> this I think it's because, okay, it's because Venom is such a popular character. Yeah, uh, and Sony knows that. And this is this is them kind of thinking they're being clever. Yeah. Like, when, like, people got pissed at the rumor that Doomsday was going to be, be in BVS a year before it came out. Um, spoilers, he was in BVS, if you somehow haven't seen it. Um, the worst part of it, but that's a conversation for another day. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just, but it's going to go away. Like, they're, we're going to get within, like, six months of it supposedly coming out, and, and the they'll won't even all announce it and push we'll back. It. Yeah. Right, like, every, after Spider-Man comes out, it makes like two billion dollars, probably not, but who knows? Um, and, but it makes shit tons of money. Uh, Sony will put some news out about how they're getting doing casting because they want to make sure that Marvel knows, hey, we, we can still do this without you. Um, we don't need you to make our own to make our money. We can still make a billion dollars all on our own. That's what this is about. Um, and the same thing will happen when the animated Spider-Man movie comes out. But that one's actually going to come out. Um, and if so, this movie comes out, if this if this makes it past uh, the conversation phase, God, I hope it fucking falls on its face. And I I don't usually hope movies fail. Oh man, I hope this sinks. However, that said, if they announce that Drew Goddard, uh, current director of Pacific Rim Two is coming back to finish the project that he started. Um, my opinion will completely change. Um, mm, wait, I thought awesome. it was uh, Stephen S. Tonight that was directing. He was, he, was, he was working on it as well. They both worked on Daredevil. Um, yeah. But Goddard was... Goddard Wasn't got he slated for Sinister Six? Yeah, and then he, he switched to uh, Venom. And he okay, got, then, uh, I'm he gonna, got okay. very far. Let's just, as a point of this, let's bring up the Sinister Six. Let's bring up the fact they had a post credit stinger for this. Let's bring up the fact they made a CG teaser for it. Where's the fucking yep. movie? It, it's, it's the same shit. Yeah. It's the same well, as the Aunt May spy flick, which I'm never going to not bring up again because it's the, it's the most egregious example I've heard. A Sony being like, well, we can make a universe out of this character property. We don't need anybody yeah. else. Yeah. And I guarantee that that will get... No, that'll come back up again. Like, it'll be... It'll be that the current Aunt May is a current spy for S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, yeah, that'll happen. Like, at some point, there will be rumors of that movie happening. It'll never actually happen. Um, but, like, if Marvel ever starts to talk about maybe parting ways with Sony or something, it'll come out. And it doesn't really matter if it ever actually gets released if Marvel's investors, Disney's investors to be specific, get anxious, it could change the direction Marvel will go in terms of working with Sony in the future. Um, yeah, corporate talk. Real real fun subject. Um, yeah. I heard most about Sony. Well, going back to Sinister Six, is we've had Suicide Squad come out. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. We know what that movie would have looked like. Like, I guarantee. I mean, again, other than Drew Goddard and Steven Estenite. Yeah, I like, think if they had actually made it, it would have been good. Yeah, but like, any yeah. other director, it's, like, you uh, care, but uh, it's like, it you had, you had something, and then it right. Just, happened. Well, here's like, the funny uh, thing, too, is, uh, like, Suicide Squad, despite what everyone felt about it, and despite the critical reception, Suicide Squad made a shitload of money. Yeah, like, right. They had... Like, the they word had of mouth on that was ridiculous. People had to have been seeing it twice. Yeah. And granted, I like Suicide Squad. So, right. I mean, I, I granted, I fully am, I'm, 
I look at it and go, well, this was clearly chopped up by someone who didn't know what they were doing. Um, yeah. Someone who's only made trailers in their entire career. Yeah, huh. but, like, the fact that we got a Suicide Squad movie before the Sinister Six even came together as, like, anything more than just a sting or a teaser is still pretty incredible. But when I first heard yeah. about Sinister Six, Suicide Squad was even announced. So it's like... Yeah. Yeah. It's fucking and it, crazy to me. Like... Yeah, it's kind of... It is kind of weird. And... Like, at some point, I don't think it was Orsai. I don't remember if it was Orsai or Kurtzman. Whichever one wasn't working on Star Trek before it became Star Trek Beyond and got directed by Justin Lin. Whoever wasn't that person. Uh, I think he was in talks directed at some point. And uh, both of them had never directed anything. Uh, well, maybe one of them. But they're both... Uh, and they're not good writers, let me tell you. Yeah, they're not, not good. Uh, their best movie is Transformers 1. Uh, I'll just let that sink in. I'll just let that... Uh, and I'm a defender of Transformers 1. Well, they, they wrote let the first Star Trek movie, I think, but I think they didn't, yeah. they, weren't, yeah. they didn't write that alone. Yeah, and that one... That's Abrams' energy and uh, yeah. uh, enthusiasm pulling that movie. Um, they also wrote uh, Into Darkness, again. Let and that sink weren't they in. writers on uh, Fringe to early on? Uh, they were producers. Not the same thing. They did write a lot of episodes of Lost, though. Um, yeah, and that's like I, it's like the Damon uh, Lindelof thing. It's like you just because you're a part of something decent doesn't mean in the future you're going to produce anything that's not shit. Looks at Prometheus. I was, uh, just, I was about, about to say, say I'm going to glance awkwardly over Prometheus. Thanks, you idiot. You messed that movie up for me. I still like Prometheus, but that's that. Yeah. So issues there. Okay. Well, we're almost approaching the two hours. So I, hell, yeah. let's just go for it. Um. Let's talk about uh, Matthew Vaughn potentially directing Superman. Uh, we got nine minutes, so that's just uh, let's talk about it real quick. Um, I'm in. That's all I'm I in. say. I'm really. in just like Matt Reeves directing the Batman. It seems like Warner Brothers is finally like maybe we should just get directors with good credibility under their belt. Right. <laughs> yeah. Let's get directors who like when you hear their names together, they make sense. You know, like. When also, you let's this... not get directors who have had, uh, what was, I guess, like Man of Steel combined, because Man of Steel's reputation has slowly declined since release. Um, why don't we get directors who don't have a long list of failures behind them? Right. And, and I like Zack Snyder. Here's the, I like Zack Snyder. He, he's yeah. made three movies I think are pretty fucking fantastic. But since Watchmen, he hasn't had a single movie that either wasn't a bomb, like critically loathed, or right. or completely divisive. And also... Let's get directors who aren't good at just one thing. Yes. Like, that's, like, the biggest criticism you can have of Zack Snyder is that he's only really good at one particular thing. I heard and Willie that's... on Super Best Friend say that Zack Snyder can do these few things. He is good at majestic imagery and yep. music. And that is yep. it. Yep. He's, he's not – he's great at taking a comic book – about 300 Spartan warriors fighting when, supernatural Persians. When he is adapting That's, someone's work, he seems to flourish. Dawn of the Dead, 300, watch. Right. Because he gets also, the, he understands the faithfulness of the source material and also mm-hmm. kind of like seems to kind of blossom when he's in that kind of environment where it's like he gets to basically get, he gets to kind of nerd out and be like, oh, I get to, you know, do this off this work I like. Um, right. And but like, like when you when you let him off that leash, he does things like Batman vs Superman. Yeah, and well, like when he has to do something it, really complex, he doesn't do well. When it comes ahead, to uh, when it comes to Zack Snyder, when it came to Watchmen, the storyboards were the comic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and he just adapted it. He did and nothing. And if anybody complains that they changed individual. the ending, I got something to tell you: the movie ending is better than the book ending. Yeah. Yes, it no, is. The book ending is uh... the book ending is the book ending would require an extra thirty minutes of explanation. And people would right. leave that going, well, that was really interesting until the giant squid monster showed up and blew up New York. Right, yeah. <laughs> it really didn't The movie didn't jumps, work. the book jumps the shark, and thankfully the, the rest of the book is so good, you're kind of like, all right, this, this is, I can buy this. But, like, yeah. it's, it's absurd. Yeah, and it, it works on a comic book panel because opening a comic book with a giant dead squid works um, because you just have to put your comic book down and be like, wait, what? <laughs> And it also works in favor of the movie because they kind of tied into a lot of the, the political fears of the time, like nuclear armament and the Cold War. And Doctor Manhattan is like the embodiment of fear of a of a powerful weapon. Right. So if you turn the whole planet against him, it makes more sense than like here's some giant squid monsters that I made with the assistance of some painter that I blew up in a boat. 
Right, and then if we expand this to, to David Ayer, David Ayer is good at making movies that are hyper violent, uh, movies that are all about broing down, being being big bros, being cool and shit, and cursing and shooting people and blowing their heads off. And he, yeah, he tons he of violence in, in high conflict, um, like uh, high emotional setting uh, action movies. Yeah, yeah. That, so what what happened with Suicide Squad? Well, we so, know what happened with Suicide Squad. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's one little thing I want to bring up. Uh, yeah. David Goyer okay. is uh, is going to uh, direct, direct one of, of two films. I don't think he's going to direct anything, but go on. <laughs> the Green Lantern's mo- the Green Lantern Corps movie. <sighs> okay. Or Suicide Squad 2. Okay. Neither of those things is going to happen. You want to know why? His last directorial film Blade was Trinity. Blade Trinity. Yeah, they will... And even his writing credits have been very hodgepodge. I, I've and said I mean, it before. Let's, let's be honest. Um, David Goyer is an enemy to this community, and he should not be allowed near anything involving right. it. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry, what just happened? I heard David Goyer is directing Green Lantern, and I passed out. From yeah, there. yeah, neither of those things is gonna happen. I don't understand Warner Bros. attached to him, attachment to him. It's because he seems like he was one of the writers on what Batman Begins and Dark Knight. He he wrote all three of those Nolan movies, so he basically. He, but he with the assistance s- of with the assistance of Jonathan Nolan and Christopher Nolan, right? Like I'm sure whatever yeah. he wrote was then transformed by them into something that was like presentable. Yeah, yeah. same thing with Blade Two with uh, he, Guillermo. He's earned like ten failures, uh, and he's only he hasn't had any solid failures. Yeah, he's someone who like, has publicly failed more than Zack Snyder. If anybody, like Zack Snyder, deserves way more chances over David Goyer. Also, again, David Goyer has vocally con- uh, vocally con- uh, confirmed that he is he's a pile of shit. Yeah, um, he is like I said, an enemy of this community, and should be yeah. nowhere near it. He can yeah, go fuck off elsewhere. Yeah, I, I've said it many times. He's not that great a writer. He's great at first drafts. That's what I've said many times. Blade 2 is not his movie. It's Gamma del Toro's movie. Uh, yeah. The only thing you can attribute to Goyer is the first draft. You can only attribute the first draft of Blade to him. The final movie is that director whose name I can't remember. Stephen Norrington. Blade Trinity. Yes, thank you. Blade Trinity is all Goyer all the time. And here's the thing, I've actually never seen all of Blade Trinity, so I don't I have oh, no desire to. It's Batman yeah, Purcell. Yeah, yeah no, that's true. and Triple H is in it. Um but back the to only... Matthew Vaughn as a as potential man yeah. director. That's Matthew brilliant Vaughn. because yeah. Matthew Vaughn makes colorful ass movies. Yeah. And that's what Superman and he can is adapt. primary colors. Yeah, yeah, if he makes a movie if he made a Superman movie just like the way he made X, uh, first first class, I'd be so yeah. And also you don't have to worry about studios pushing him around because it's well documented. Um, he did not get along with the guys at Fox. Also, this is where my hatred of Lauren Schuler Donner comes around, comes from. He did not get along well with her, but he didn't get pushed around. They barely got him to change anything that he wanted to do. There were only a couple things. Like, he wanted the Nazi killing scene to be a m- lot more violent than it was. Like, little things like that. But for the most part, that movie is the movie he wanted to make. Now... He has said he will never make another PG-13 movie at Fox again. Um, he will mostly make R-rated movies there, which is part of why I don't think the Superman thing will happen necessarily. But if it does... Yeah, I, I was because I was going to say, on the other hand, of X-Men First Class, we have something that's very colorful and very uh, fun, uplifting, and makes you care about everybody. Um, Kick-Ass is... That, ooh, even that movie. Quite something. <laughs> But even so, Kick-Ass, even Kick-Ass was, movie, I think, was great. Yeah, and here's the thing. That movie, it's not... You might think it's very dark and gritty. It's actually a very colorful movie. Yes, you go and it's back and you very, watch it. it's, And it's very upbeat. And they found a way to yeah. make you emotionally invest in Nicolas Cage doing a Batman accent. Or doing a... Uh, not yeah. a Batman, a, 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 an Adam West impression. Yeah. Um, the con- the, there's a combination of dark, gritty, and serious... And lighthearted, uh, a fun that he manages to find, and it's like this perfect middle place. Which, when I think about that in comparison to the DC universe, 
is exactly why one thing can't be grafted onto the other successfully. His sort of like, I, I call it sour sweet tone mixed onto this very like this tone this that already exists. I don't see how those can't rendition fit of Superman, who's, who's currently the scariest superhero in movies because he is literally one death away from becoming Injustice Superman, yeah. basically, is what they're implying. Yeah. Like, I completely believe that he can take... If I, I don't know, like, well, what's the line? Uh, you should be dead already, or whatever. Like, he can take that and turn it into something that is sort of... I'd say middle. Like, if he can find a happy medium between BVS and Richard Donner's Superman 2, uh, that's great. And that's I'd be okay, because I've said before... Kind of what I'm, I want. I'm okay with a more serious, deadlier DC film universe... But for yeah. God's sake, please give us some levity every once in a while. Yeah. I mean, and I feel like both of these directors, I, I do they like... got Matt Reeves uh, with the Batman, yeah. and if Matthew Vaughn goes on for Superman, then you have two potential products, uh, projects coming out that will restore some goodwill in people. Wonder Woman is still kind of on the table right now because it's not out yet. Yeah. People, are, people are excited for it, but we've been down this road before with Warner Brothers. Yeah. Yeah. I and, mean, like, if you look at it, James Wan, Matt Reeves... Um, Matthew Vaughn. Those are three people who can adapt. Those are three people who work well with studio notes most of the time. Those are three people who will stand up for their vision, um, but they will compromise when they need to. That's how you make a successful movie. Those are the essential elements. Fast and Furious 7 is nothing but James Wan compromising where he needs to and imitating Justin Lin where he also needs to. These are three directors who can slip into these projects and not get bogged down in their own vision, um, which is kind of what we need. We need something in between uh, an auteur's eye and studio meddling. Um, and so far we've had like the two things really like fighting with each other in a very stressful, all-on-screen way. Um, what we need is a perfect mesh of the two. Um, and I think that these are the directors that can do it. Yeah, totally. Um, anybody else have anything else to say? Because now I think we're going pretty long. Uh, not really. Yeah I, think, yeah, I think we can cut it off. Um, I think we have reached the end. Yeah, I'm, that's too I'm uh, reaching my, the bottom of my fuel tank, so we got to hurry up. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's go to plugs. Plug, uh, yeah, plug it up, I guess. Hey, everybody, you can follow me, Connor, in case you have not figured out who we are and we're not a room full of Ryan Scotts, as Sage said. Um, you can follow me, Connor, on Twitter at Westwood Commander. I don't tweet, but if you follow me, maybe I'll start. Uh, you can follow me uh, on Twitter at Davenport. And... Uh, you... Oh, go ahead, sorry. Uh, I wasn't sure if you were done. Uh, um... You can follow me uh, at AA Haro on Twitter. Um, you can go to theharo.wordpress.com. You can find all kinds of articles, uh, all kinds of stuff, all kinds of news, stuff featuring other hosts of this podcast. Yeah, so like, please, you know. uh, yeah, please go go check it out. There may or may not be uh, other podcasts uh, produced by that site in the time being. Uh, who knows? You won't find out until another five weeks from now, maybe? Oh, You'll yeah. find out in like a year and a half. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you can... Uh, don't forget to go to the group. If you're not already there, if, you're not, have it, if you haven't be- requested to join, do that. And if your name isn't uh, Guillermo Malficorum. If you're if you're that guy, watch fuck him be off. like a loyal listener who is like, I really want to join the group, and then he's like, I don't know why they rejected me. <laughs> it's your name. Change your name, then come back. Yeah, change your name to something less body. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, um, the website, uh, phantomzonepodcast.wordpress.com. Please share it. Uh, please let other people know about it. Uh, I said it on the episode from last week that still isn't out. Please tell us where you are listening to us. Uh, again, if you're listening on the YouTube, tell us so we know to get it up on the YouTube quicker. If you're on Stitcher or whatever whatever way you are listening to us, please tell us so we know 
where to put our effort uh, to make sure that this show gets out in a timely fashion. Yes, so, and one quick side note, according to Baron Pat last week. Uh, thank you to everyone who gave us warm feedback on the Logan episode. I think the movie being as good as it is and generating the hype its own helped us, but uh, I got a lot of people excited to hear that we made a Logan episode. I haven't gotten a lot of you know general feedback yet, but even your reaction was, was good enough for me, so thank you. So what do we have coming up for our loyal listeners? Um, I think we have a movie special sometime soon. I really don't we know. Do, and I'm just as excited for it as I was with Logan. Yeah, yeah. That No, that one's going to be great. Um, I just remember gonna, what it is. You're going to, you're going to, how do I, how do I do this without, how, that, I need a pun. <laughs> it's really going to bring us out of our um, shells. That's, yes, it's going to bring us out of our shells. Yeah. Um, yeah, you'll get it in 15 days or less. Get it? Is it 15 minutes? Okay. Um, You're standing, uh, dude. You had something. Um, <laughs> God damn it. Um, all right. I think this all is right. it for the Phantom Zone this week. Goodbye, everybody. California. <laughs>